So, Terry, in my opinion... Terry is like... Terry is what would happen... I'm gonna turn my music down just a little bit so you guys can hear me a little bit better. Might be too low. We'll go, we'll go right there. Nice, nice fine middle ground. It's a, nice in the background. Terry, in my opinion, is what happens whenever if you ha if you were to take Ganondorf and turn him into a Shoto. He still has cancels. He still has like some fast, some some safe stuff. He has all of his like special moves, and he has interesting, fun things that only Shotos get, like the auto turnaround. But at the end of the day, he's still a character who moves fairly slow who hits really hard, who's really beefy, and who has, like, a couple different burst movement options. Um, you've been dual manning? Nice. That's cool. Just, like, going to... Zoom in on that a little bit so I can do chat, chat a little bit better. Um, yeah, so I'm actually doing this review um, for a student, uh, for one of my students of VX Dojo, um, because he has a, a friend who plays against Terry that he plays against a lot. Hey, gamer. Welcome to the stream. It has been quite some time. Three months. So I'm going over this for him, because I want to talk about all the ins and outs of this matchup, um, talk about what Terry does, so we have like a good understanding of the character, and what Roy should be doing in the matchup. So first of all, I want to start out by like going through Terry's stuff. Um, and I've got this set up so you guys can all see it properly, it's not cutting off any part of the screen, so it's good. So Terry's got stuff that's like pretty safe on field. His dab's only minus six, which is actually pretty, pretty safe. His forward tilt is a really important move to understand. Um, only minus seven on shield, and it's got a really big hitbox. So this move is like actually disjointed. See this hitbox? See that foot? That's where that's where his hitbox is. This is where the hitbox is. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. These boys might not. Actually, I'm not. I lose the, I lose the set, but don't tell anybody that spoilers. Does it have like intangibility? Oh, it does have like intangibility. Wow. Yeah, that blue. So, legit, one hundred percent. He is. This is like. Kind of like PM Roy F, not quite PM Roy F because it doesn't have that much reach, but it's like, it is a sword move. It is, a, is, a, is a, he does have a sword foot on top of like ridiculously large hitboxes. So this move is important to understand because it comes out and it's got a big hitbox and it's hard to contest it, um, and it's pretty safe. It's like minus seven, was it? Minus seven, which isn't really punishable, but it also doesn't really get Terry much. He doesn't... On certain DIs, he can get the F-Tilt into Side B or F-Tilt into Bust a Wolf, but it's like, it's a low reward poke. It's kind of like our version of Down Tilt, except just in the air, and a little bit, a little bit meatier, a little bit slower startup. Um, so it's like his, his safe poke move. It can be kind of hard for us to beat sometimes, um, because if we're trying to, like, poke with, like, forward tilts or down tilts, it reaches out far enough that it'll, like, generally beat our attacks out before we can get in range to, like, poke at his feet or, like, swing at him. Um, but it's not great, in my opinion, for beating out, like, aerial attacks. If you're if we're dropping out with forward air, it'll probably beat it. Um, dash in neutral air will probably lose to it because we'll probably get kicked in our shins after, while our hitbox, like, is above him. And it's also 27 total frames, so it's not, like, it's not as safe on whiff as a move like our down tilt. So it can be whiff punished. It can, like, even if you don't punish it, you can still take momentum if he just if he's like just spamming F tilt. Can't hit his leg though. You can hit his leg after the move is over. So you can see here, after the hitboxes are done, his leg goes back to tangibility. You can't hit his leg again. So you could hit him if we're like if we're boxing with Terry and we're like dancing around and he tries to F tilt. We could like short hop so that the F tilt is missing and then fall and like hit with tip F tilt. Did his foot as a way of like breaking his own. Random things. Up tilt. Oh, interesting, that's up tilt. His up tilt and his up smash looks very similar. Pretty fast. Pretty unsafe. You can do some stuff off of it. Down tilt. Down tilt is a good move. Um, but it's different than the regular Shoto's. So Ken pressure is really, really strong because he can actually like if he believe this is the case and i'm like this is this is the one of the parts where i'm getting into like shoto information that is so intricate that it might be wrong in some way shape or form my understanding of it is if if uh, if ken down tilts he can actually cancel the down tilt into another down tilt either that or it's just so fast it might be that it's just super fast probably not because it's 16 total frames so let's look at let's look at ken in, in comparison what's up lux welcome to the stream been a minute 
It's been a lot of down tilt. Down tilt's got even less. Down tilt has like 21 total frames. I only know this because I literally referenced this earlier today. <laughs> I only have that memorized. Hey, Mage SSP. Appreciate you swinging by. I'll, I'm going to try to stream more. No promises, but hopefully I will be less busy in January. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, so Roy, Roy Down Tilt has 21 total frames. Those six frames are a pretty significant difference. Uh, so Shoto um, basically means a character like Ken and Ryu. It's kind of a loose term. Um... In Smash, we generally use the term Shoto to refer to literally Ken and Ryu. Um, in traditional fighting games, Shoto is usually used as, like, the baseline, middle-of-the-ground character. Like, um, Ryu, obviously, is a Shoto in a game like... Um, Melting Brain, please hold. <laughs> in a game like Guilty Gear, like, um, Kai and Soul are Shotos. They have projectiles, they have DPs, they do things. Um... So, so the, the term has some finagle ability. The yeah, Xojo's been good. Xojo's been pretty good. I've actually been doing... One of the reasons why I haven't streamed this so long is because in the past couple of months, I've been working with high schools um, and their esports teams for Smash Brothers, and I've been doing trading with them, um, which is really cool. Keeps me really busy, though. So I haven't been able to have much time for much else outside of, like, normal EX Dojo internal training. 14 total frames? I feel like... I feel like he is. Can, he can cancel it. That's the thing I should probably like at some point in time sit down in training mode and like actually frame by frame this because I'm pretty sure. So how it works in Street Fighter is if you hit an opponent with like a light, light kick, a crouching light kick like this, you can actually chain it into another crouching light kick, which I'm pretty sure is what Ken does. Um, so because of that, despite the fact that on paper his down tilt should be less safe, um, it actually comes out pretty rapid fire. Whereas Terry's down tilt does not. He cannot chain down tilt into down tilt. He does have to completely finish the down tilt before starting another one. Strive does look pretty sick. I'm I'm very interested in Strive. Yeah, it is super sick, at gamer. And it's like I'm probably going to be doing similar things in like January in that uh, in those seasons as well. So this is like, it's going to become a pretty serious thing, which obviously is like a really good source of res revenue for, for EX Dojo. So pretty, the EX Dojo is doing pretty good. It's exciting. So Terry down tilt is like, it is minus six. So it is still super safe, but he doesn't pressure you as hard as Ken, especially because he doesn't. So like where you have his collarbone breaker, Ken has some setups into his like kick, kick shenanigans that'll break your shield. Terry doesn't have as much scary stuff. He can... He has some stuff with, like, some, like, pretty, like, fine-tuned stuff, or I should say, like, pretty, um, pretty hard-to-do stuff. It's, it's, it takes a lot more effort to, like, set up for it, where he can do, like, tilts into, um, his flip kick. What's it called? Do you have names here? I don't think we have names here. Oh, they do. Excellent. <laughs> his, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. there's so much stuff here. The crack shoot, where you can actually hit with, like multiple hits of it where it will sometimes break shield but that's pretty difficult to set up he's a character generally if he's down tilting your shield he's pre like he's pressuring you not so much in like the the roy and ken sense where he's like actively pressing buttons and hitting your shield with stuff um and more so just like safely pressuring and uh, that's a really important thing to understand because if you freak out whenever he down tilts your shield then like bad things are going to go bad crack shoot right yeah thanks um so understanding that is really important this is something um, the gap is big enough that, as Roy, we can up B through a second down tilt. If, so if, he, if he's, like, rapidly pressing down tilt on shield, we can up B through it. We can also just jump away. It's just, it's, especially because it's six frame startup, it's a lot, a lot higher startup than can down tilt. If, if they're, like, pressing the, sh the, the shield, you could probably safely jump away. You could safely jump away, fit the, like, 11 frame window. To just short hop or full hop out of shield, even after the first down tilt. For Ken, you sometimes have to wait a couple down tilts first. Um, and for like the rapid down tilts like that. This one is much slower. So it's a good move. It's a good confirm move. But it's not heavy active pressure. Welcome to the stream, streetwise. Street. Welcome to the stream, streetwise. I got the tongue tied a little bit there. It is special cancelable. So like he can do mean stuff with it. But it's not as strong a pressure tool. His dash attack is basically Ganondorf, dash attack, 
it's good and strong and goes far and is one of his best burst movement options. Ward Smash is... I think he's got sword legs. Does he not have sword legs? No, it's just a big hitbox. Short Up Nair seems like it beat it. Short Up Nair would go over it. You would, Short Up Nair would... Uh, so, th three frames, you'd be airborne. Um, six frames after that, the hitbox would be come out, coming out, which is still before his second down tilt will come out. But then, because he's crouched low, the um, neutral air will... His down tilt will low profile our neutral air. So if he's just, like, mashing it, it's not a great response. Excuse me. I want to look at his hitboxes, too. All of his hitboxes. His hitboxes are pretty generous, as you can see. They're, they're pretty beefy. Contributes to the beef. Is it? Are you sure this is up tilt? <laughs> These are the jabs. Where is up smash? Here it is. Okay, it's more of a straight up, more of a Mexican shoryu than the <laughs> the like uppercut. Mm -hmm. Not the worst. Important to note for Roy is that none of these are drop F, F smash punishable. He's got like his smash attacks are punishable, but they're not big punishable. Even up smash, we wouldn't be able to drop shield side B this. It'd have to be like neutral air up B or drop shield jab. Up heel, down tilt. Same for down smash. Relatively safe for what it is. His neutral air. His aerials are really safe. So the, similarly to Roy and um, not Roy, Ken, <laughs> the other fire character. Similarly to Ken and Ryu, um, he has pretty safe aerials on shield. He doesn't have as fast movement speed, but he's got a little bit better control. So it can be kind of tricky for him to set his aerials up, as like especially for like falling aerials. His forward air though reaches really far down, so you can actually do like short hop rising forward air and hit people as Terry. It's actually not a bad out of shield option, frame ten option. And this will hit a standing ray. Neutral that hitbox is big. Oh, hitbox is a lot bigger than I expected it to be. That explains a lot actually. <laughs> Similarly to Ken, if he lands on you with neutral air, it's hella safe. Like, falling neutral air into jab is like an uh, a pretty tight block strain. Only seven frame gap. So we could up be it, but nothing else should be respected. Same for back air, super safe, super big hitbox. Up air is basically like zero suit up air, except it's harder. Comes out really fast. Let's look at this down air hitbox. Pretty big. I wonder if it's just the tip here. It's probably just the tip there that spikes. <laughs> Power wave. Pew, pew, pew. Worth noting is that the... Um... So the weak shot of Power Wave actually goes slower, as you can see. That is significant sometimes. Power wave in the air. It's got some interesting hitboxes. Uh, burning knuckle is really, really unsafe. This is basically like, this is the Ganon down B of Terry, more or less. He moves forward a little bit faster, I want to say, and like there are some situations where he combos off of it. But even like even the the safer version, the input version, is still negative twenty six. That is drop shield death smash punishable. Maybe a little bit hard to react to because it's got a lot of shield stun because it hits hard. Um, but it is a move like drop shield side be easy. Crack shoot. Crack shoot also is technically punishable. This is a move where like it's pretty fast, so that a lot of times, like anytime Terry is hitting us with it, it should be because it caught us off guard because of just how fast it moves. But it is minus 12, so it is a very easy narrow to shield, very easy up out of shield, very easy grab. Maybe not very easy grab, but a grab. <laughs> Two frame window to grab. To true punish with a grab, anyways. So this is a really interesting thing. Um, so Rising Tackle. His recovery is, in some ways, a little bit tricky to work with, and one of the reasons why I feel like we don't see more Terries, in that none of his stuff will snap to the ledge. That is, including his up B. Um, his grab distance after the end of it is pretty good, so it is possible for him to sweet spot below the ledge, but he does have to be kind of, um, kind of accurate with his recovery. The... 
the uppy hitboxes are pretty good. Also has like, so non-input, even non-input uppy still has legend tangibility on the way up. Let's just slow this down frame by frame. Not the, so you can see here, even like as soon as the, even before the hitbox comes out, he has legend tangibility. So it's not something where we can like slap his legs. That doesn't work. And also worth noting that after the first hitboxes, his feet are also hitboxes. So we can't just drop on top of him. That doesn't work because this is really disjointed. The non-input up B does lose the leg intangibility before the final hit. So we could potentially like down air or back air him in these frames. That'd be pretty, honestly, still pretty hard, especially because that hitbox is pretty big and this move happens fast. Um, Overall, it's kind of hard for Roy, in my opinion, to contest his up B. And even the input version, he still doesn't have like intangibility near the top. He does have full body intangibility at the start, though. So, if the, I do the charge input and then recover with the charge input, you can see here the blue is the intangibility. He's just, he's, he's just not hurtable. <laughs> you can't hit him until here. And even then, it's just half body, and then it goes up to full body. But those are pretty small windows to hit. And like the, the hitboxes are pretty decent. Like, especially like the backside there, I think is really important. If this backside hitbox wasn't off of the body, if it was just on like his knee and this was just on his foot, it'd be easy for us to intercept with back airs. But here, this makes it a lot harder. And we could, we still could tip back air here. It is still possible. But setting up for that position without him up being directly up into us, um, or catching like the, because he, he, has, he has a little bit where he can drift left or right as he's doing the uppie. Um, with the speed and the size of his hitbox, it's pretty tricky for us to intercept the up B itself. There are some other positions where he's kind of vulnerable, and we'll talk about those. But all it's easier to show those in person. Well, like going over the game, I feel. So, power dunk, pretty good, pretty negative. Um, they can do a trick to make it safe, where they, like, jump a certain height and then power dunk, and then the power dunk will auto-cancel. Um, it, it'll finish the animation in the air, and then he'll land and just be in neutral. And it's actually pretty plus, if as far as I understand it, if he does it that way. But the power dunk itself is pretty unsafe. So if he tries to go for like jab, jab, power, but power dunk, and you drop out of it, or like you are shielding, it you 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 punch him real hard. Busta Wolf is hella negative. Power guys are also pretty negative. Kind of slow to 20 frame startup, you know, which makes sense considering this. <laughs> but uh, worth noting, Buster Wolf comes out pretty, pretty significantly faster. Also goes far fast. Six frame grab, which is good. I feel like his grab range isn't the best. Not the worst. It's pretty, pretty big, but it doesn't. Uh, it kind of does reach the tip of his hands. Interesting. Don't see Terry's dash grab much, from what I've seen. Power dunk can also break a shield. That makes sense, yeah. It move hits really hard. His throws are all pretty good, and that's about all the info we really need to look at for now. Ooh, spot dodge attack. So this is important. Uh, spot dodge attack, do you say... I wish they said when you can spot the attack. I'm pretty sure it's like 15 frames into the spot dodge. You can spot dodge attack. Um, oh, and that's got full upper body invulnerability. So this is actually a pretty good like sidestep attack option, especially if your, his opponent is like coming down after him, down at him afterwards, which is kind of silly, <laughs> but it's there. It's a thing. I'm pretty sure he has a three frame air dodge. Yep, three frame air dodge, which is great. It means that our down throw neutral air eats him up. And that's all about all we really need to look at for now, I think. So I actually, so I have two different sets that I'm going to go over today. Um, I have a set from like week one of Terry being out. So this isn't like the most refined Terry play, but good to go over because uh, I was the one playing against the Terry, in my opinion. I'm playing against ends Terry. Um, in internal EX Dojo stuff. And then I have another set, which is the only other set I could find with like a solid Roy player versus a solid Terry player. Um, that's from Ohio or Utah, actually. So, it'll be fun to go over. So, the, one of the 
most important things about this matchup, let's go ahead and mute that, is like this movement we're seeing right here, is Terry, Terry's got some back and forth movement. He can like, he can move, but he doesn't move very far. He doesn't move really fast. So at any point in time, really what he's looking for is, let's change this color up. I like it would be this red, thank you. So what he's looking for, I've got my little on-screen annotation tool working, so this will be fun. Um, he's looking for like, run up down tilt, which covers like around this space. He's looking for run in forward air, which reaches down to like here. It's actually pretty good. Um, or he's trying to do some sort of burst movement tool, which will reach even farther. So like about right here. He's trying to catch movement in this space. And this is really um, about his max threat radius. Like his threat radius itself isn't really big. If he starts up side B, like in this distance, it's, it's like kind of unreactable, but past that, it might reach a little bit farther, but it's something that we should be able to react, especially because he's got the animation where he dives, like he, he throws his arms up. You guys can't really see it because my my, <laughs> my camera zoomed in a little bit. Um, but he like he throws his arms out, like kind of like the Zangief bear charge, and then he flies forward. So it's it's got a lot of startup on it. It's not something that should catch us unless we're already in something that's committal. So if we're like, if we're standing here, and then he starts the side B as we're like trying to start dashing back, then it'll catch us. Same for the reverse. If we're standing here and he thinks we're going to run in, he could side B in to hit us at this point in the middle of the dash. Uh, but his actual threat range isn't really, really big. It's he's not he's not really mobile. He's not a mobile character. He has some burst movement options, and whenever he's close range, he like his his tools are meaty. But it should be hard for him to get into those positions. And he can do so. This is a thing that N likes to do a lot um, with very similar to like how his Ken plays, where he uses the full hop to set up for falling aerials like this. So sort of like, um, let's see, he, he, like he runs in, why do you change off my red? I like my red. So he runs in, he jumps, and then he uses the full hop to set up an attack, kind of like an arc down here. Um, and this is actually kind of tricky to beat because his, all of his hurt boxes are up here and uh, as he's coming down, the hitboxes are starting to come out. So to beat this sort of movement, you have to already be attacking him whenever he's in this position up here. So you'd have to like, you'd have to rise with neutral air, or really just neutral air. <laughs> like forward air. Forward, if we did the forward air early enough, this would also work and cover this arc. But neutral air realistically is the option that is like fast enough. Our forward air is kind of, it's a little bit on the slow side. So if we wanted to use forward air, short hop forward air would probably actually be better. To like come through and like chop through this space, but that's kind of scary to contest the, the hitboxes. So we want to be trying to we want to avoid his approaches like this, and this is something that I struggled against as Roy a lot for a while, specifically versus Ken. Um, the solution that I'm finding is so like like I mentioned, like the the attack arc is like Wah! and then he comes in and swings in and puts his big feet out in this area. Important thing to understand about Shotos is that they don't have great aerial mobility, similar to Ryan Krom. Um, so once they start jumping in this way, it's hard for them to change the direction they're going in. So the way that we, in my opinion, the best way to deal with this is not even necessarily to try to intercept and like hit him at the top of his arc, because that's kind of hard to do. You need to be like setting up for it ahead of time, setting up for it as they're setting up for it. Um, unless you're already doing that, like not even ready to do it, unless you're already doing that whenever they're jumping, in my opinion, what we should be doing is just like leaving. Just, just, just get out of dodge. Just move back, let their move whiff, Stay outside of the range where they could be pressing buttons whenever they hit the ground. And then, let's like this is like down tilt or F tilt, like this, this space right here, roughly. And then from here, we can start setting up for positions to actually attack this space. This is very messy. <laughs> set up positions to attack this space safely with like with our neutral air or with like falling forward air or with like full hopping and falling with forward air, or double jumping and dropping with up air, etc, etc, etc. Moving, this is definitely a character where we want to stay outside of his space. We want to be, we want to be staying outside of his threat zones. We want to be shadowing him constantly. We want to respect his, his threat zones and just don't be in them because he hits way harder than us and he's really durable. Not way harder than us consistently, I would say. Like Roy's got more consistent damage output. Terry still has like good damage output. So yeah, so like right there. 
whenever he F tilts like that, I actually should be pressing buttons. Again, this is week one of Terry, so this is going back a little ways. Um, not, 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 not necessarily going over the set to show this is the pinnacle of the Roy versus Terry matchup, but to talk about the matchup in general and things that we should be doing. Um, so, like, right here, when he whips F tilt like that, like, as you could see, like, I could very, I could, I could have pressed any button here. I could have just dash attacked him. Um, but because I'm not super familiar with the character yet, I wanted, I was expecting him to, to, to back away, and I don't know, I just kind of, I just, I think I was kind of confused <laughs> on what was going to be happening. I guess I think I might have been expecting a roll. Yep, two conversions off of the down tilt it does hurt. Big old hitbox on the forward air. This is a fun thing I've been messing with, and it doesn't work out here. But uh, short hop forward air from the the ledge is actually not the worst situation for Roy because here so now that he we've done the forward air from the top oh, this is great position but not the worst just to clarify that really quick so so you you rise up you rise up the forward air the forward air hits their shield and then from here you can actually do what I did here where you fall again and swing with up air or you could air dodge and if you air dodge you can air dodge through and then land behind them and then it's a, pretty tricky to punish this sometimes because now we're behind them and then we're in a position where the, where we take in their back, and now they have to scramble to try to keep stage control, or they have to give up and roll and be back in the stage, and then be completely up, completely have lost stage control. Um, so it's risky, and you know if you get hit out of this, we die, obviously as always. Um, but it's something that's been working out decently, and for like for situations like this, like it actually almost worked out pretty well here because if this up air had sweet spotted, then it would have been a full combo. I actually tried to go for the up air jab that which would have connected on sweet spot not on tip though mm, neutral air kind of risky kind of worked um this is a situation in my opinion so terry's got a pretty fast grab did he turn around in his shield i don't think he must have turned around and then shielded <laughs> let's see this in slow-mo i'm pretty sure that's what happened as he texts, and then stands up. It's hard to tell if he's in neutral or if he's. Yeah, he just fr frickin' frame one turnaround shield. So this would have been fine if he didn't get the the shield, the, the turnaround and shield at the same time because it was a shoto. But because of that, he got the grab since he was. I should have been jabbing his back. I should say I would have been jabbing his back if he wasn't a shoto. If he wasn't a. a Traditional FGC character. Um, normally, I would suggest not being in jab range of Terry because jab range is super deep. Really important thing to understand. Roy's jab has like negative range. <laughs> the the actual sweet spot range of jab is bonkers tiny. It is. It's it's like because of the the large size of the hitbox of the hilt. It like it reaches out a little bit, but it's like just barely past his foot, and then it doesn't go out at all past that. It actually goes in and moves back in on the second hit frame of the hitbox. So this you have to be really really close to land jab on characters, and you don't want to be really really close to Terry. So I don't recommend spending much time jabbing him. Um, he has good options out of shield with like he's got a fast grab and he's got a fast forward air out of shield. So it's hard like he's not a character we can really pressure with jab on shield. Trying to see if I can't hit his feet there whenever he's recovering. Here, this is actually a goof on his part. He definitely wasn't in lag anymore. I'm pretty sure he air dodged into the ground. Did he air dodge into the ground or did he actually land? No, maybe he did actually land. Weird. He started something here. Like a power dunk? Or is that the flash of my sword? <laughs> That may be the flash of my sword. I don't know. I think that's something he did. But I don't know what it is. More of a scramble than like an actual punish. Yeah, throw is really good against Terry, in my opinion. Um, because he's he's real he's bulky. Against most characters in the game. Is it my F smash? Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> uh, against most characters, so the characters that down throw neutral air works on. It works on everybody who does not have a, an escape option that's two frames or faster. Um, the majority of characters in the game has have three frame air dodge startups, so it works on 
the majority of the cast, like two-thirds of the cast. Works on Terry as well. He's three for, three for Mary Dodge. No other option faster. Um, against most characters, once you start hitting, like, 80 Rage, the down throw neutral air stops working. Like, the first hit might connect, but the second one probably won't, or they're too far away to get the combo afterwards, yada, yada, yada. Terry is beefy enough that that doesn't matter. Even with 106 Rage, I still get neutral air, still get the sweet spot, still get the combo afterwards. So, grab pretty good against him. His confirms at high percent are a little awkward. Sometimes he uh, the the character has situations like this where like if he had done jab jab up B that probably would have worked. Um, power dunk sometimes drops at higher percents too. It seems like his jab has, his jab has like a little tiny bit of growth to it on jab one and jab two. Freaking auto turn around. Another thing that's fun about the, the ledge up forward air up air is like right here. I think I'm actually starting up air up out. Yeah, it's like the animation. You can, so you can like, you can cross them up with the forward air. You can forward air them and then cross them up with falling up air if they're kind of close, which is kind of cool. Here, the auto turnaround catches me, but could have potentially worked against another character. Yeah, so like the situation's right here. This is a situation that a lot of right players who have experience against like other shadows might resp over respect. Because right there, he's like, oh, I, he, I'm used to playing against his uh, the Ken, where like he's down tilting his shield rapidly. So I was like, oh, well, I'm just stuck here. I've got to wait to see what he does, or he gets pushed push too far away. Um, that's not the case with Terry. Here, I could have upbeat through at any point. I could have jumped out at any point. If I was facing him, I could have just shield grabbed him. Um, or, like, roll behind him obviously doesn't work here, because he's, he's a Shoto, and it auto-corrects, and then he would down tilt me and then punch me in the face. Um, but... The down tilts themselves don't come out super fast. There is a pretty big gap between them. There is lots of stuff I could have done here to get around this. Gary. You shouldn't play Richter and just up -y. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Richter absolutely could up -y it. Richter could true punish up it, because Richter up -y is a six frame out of shield option. If I recall correctly. Let's test our knowledge. Richter. M6. Got it. <laughs> so I was guessing we can do something similar, but I'm not sure where the cancels it or don't. But, um, so, not sure. Oh, yeah. Well, if, if he's doing rapid down tilts, we can up B through them. Not because our up B comes out fast enough, because our up B is like a little bit slower as far as up B out of shields um, go. It's a frame 9 option, um, which is still good. It's still tied with our fastest option of neutral air out of shield and back air out of shield. Um, but we have armor. So what will happen more often than not is that the second down tilt will come out and it'll come out before the hitbox of our up B, but then the up B will armor it and then we'll pop through and then we'll we'll get them off of us. So it, it's not a true punish option, which is less good, but it is a pressure stop option, which is good. Well, just like that, just like this. Especially because he's hitting the back of my shield. If he was hitting the front of my shield here, I could grab him. Um, I might actually like, Back air would probably work here too. It might not sweet spot. I might just get the tip. Um, so I think up B is a better choice in this situation. But this is a situation where he's like, he's confident that he can rapidly down, like I say rapidly, he's confident that he can consecutively down tilt the back of my shield because he's not, I'm not facing towards him. But and then the up B will cut through the extra, the down tilt. So here, this one didn't even, didn't even start up because it didn't even hit the, the armor of the up B. I just hit in between the, the, the down tilts. But I could also armor it if I didn't do it fast enough. That's interesting. So we shouldn't down tilt the projectile, because that happens, and then we get punished. Or then he gets in on us. That's the thing, we don't want him to get in on us. We should be, as a character who's fast and a character who has a sword, this is when we activate never hit me mode. This is the matchup where we activate never hit me mode. There are some characters we can afford to scrap with and brawl with and like get in their face and throw hands. Terry's not really one of them. He's too beefy, he hits too hard. We want to dance around him. This is a very interesting setup. Really bad at that. Yeah, so this is actually kind of what I was talking about with um with hitting his leg. Uh, here, so his his F tilt comes out. And his, his foot is intangible, so like the first hit of my sword doesn't hit it. Just he's he's <laughs> actually kicking my sword right now. But after the hitbox for his F tilt is gone, now his leg can be hurt. So now the second hit of my neutral air will reach out, and it will cut through his his, his foot. 
That one actually might have just reached his head because that's got a lot of range. But I, even I could have been spaced if I was spaced more um, conservatively and I fast followed with the neutral air or like had the third swing come around to hit his foot or fell with ward air instead. This would hit his foot and it could out poke his F tilt that way. So it's a good poke, but it's not a it's not a godlike poke. Not a god tier. But it's worth noting that it only extends his hurt. The, the hurt box doesn't come out again until after the hitbox goes away. So. Nice confirm. Nice fast snap up there. He went for side, the side B against um, my ledge jump a good amount. Scary. I do lose the set, by the way, as spoilers. <laughs> but still good to review. So after he F tilts our shield again, it's, it's not something we can true punish. I wonder if I could grab his leg, actually. <laughs> Probably not, because it's only like minus six. But it's by the time the, the grab comes out, his, his, like, his, the animation's completely be over and his leg will be retracted. Um, so here, it would be tempting to try to go for like a true punish, like uppy or neutral, or uh, uppy or uh, like grab. Um, those aren't fast enough, and grab especially wouldn't reach here. So just poking back with neutral air, being safe, drifting away is the proper choice, in my opinion. This is an interesting thing. So whenever he's facing us, whenever we're facing him, rather, we can try to grab. And that was a, kind of a slow response. Um, I definitely could have grabbed him before his grab startup actually was active. But Down tilt up B. Did the second one there to get the more consistency. I'm surprised I dodged through that. I guess it's not a true combo. Or did he up tilt too late? He definitely hits me with this later. But I do try to jump later, I'm pretty sure. Or up air, one of the two. So Terry... He's got a... He's got a recovery that, like, on paper is fairly easy to hit. Like, all of his options are pretty committal. But he's also got so many different ones that it can be hard to cover them all. So he has his side B. He has crack shoot, which is the flip kick. He has power dunk, which, like, is the angly move. Um, with all of those, he has enough variability that he can oftentimes put himself in really awkward positions like this that are hard to cover. Why don't you stop my music? Yes, I am. Continue watching. Jeez. Um... So it can be tricky for a character like Roy to go out far enough or to like get, meet him at a position where he can't recover or meet him at a position where he's choosing to recover. So like right here, on paper, I could fall back and just back air him and tip back air would probably kill him here. But it's tricky to, to maneuver into that position. Actually, he has a double jump, so he definitely isn't dying there. There's, there's no way he dies there. <laughs> Absolutely no way. Don't try later grabbing F tilt. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. He, um, the grab does not true punish F tilt. He can spot dodge that. F tilt is a very difficult move to punish. This is something I've been enjoying a lot more, enjoying a lot more lately. Um, and I saw Stroder do this a good amount. Where it's like you down tilt an opponent's shield. And at this distance, opponents usually feel pretty safe because here it's pretty hard to grab. We can't just like step forward for a frame and grab. We have to commit to the full run, um, which one, we have to run so it's easier to direct. Two, it's still a grab, so it's still really committal. Um, so a lot of opponents will try to slip away at this distance after like a tip F down tilt on their shield. And forward air is really good at covering all that space. So let's get a nice, a nice example here. So opponents will try to jump out. A lot of times they'll try to full hop out because full hopping like gets them pre pretty high. Here it looks like a short hop instead. Um, he's trying to like short hop over a second down tilt to punish. Either that or his full hop just goes nowhere, which is also very possible. And then, so it's it's important to note that forward air does not start here. Forward air starts here, so it does not cover this whole sword arc, but it does cover all of this space. Let's, let's do it this way instead. This is a little bit easier to see. All of this space. So it's it's a pretty wide swing in front of Roy, um, which is difficult for opponents to get around. And then we got the body hitbox too, of course. So we're actually clipping him with that. <laughs> um, yeah, so like it, it... And that's one of the things that like... 
is took me a long time to get used to because in previous games I'm pretty sure Roy Marth Vordair well, like Roy Ford in particular, I'm pretty sure Marth Ford still does. Still, it reaches more up at like a 45 degree angle. Whereas in this game, Roy is further straight out. And actually, I can just look at the hitbox to not have to guesstimate it. I love this site so much. <laughs> it is my Bible. Dun, dun. Yeah, so the hitboxes are pretty big here, actually. His Ford Air body hitbox is like. It's not okay. <laughs> to be honest. Like, let's be honest with, it, with ourselves. That is not okay. It's actually always active over here. That's weird. I would... That's not okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna, just gonna say it's not okay and leave it at that. Um, but it doesn't hit right here. It doesn't hit up at this 45 degree angle. Jab, jab, power dunk. Really big damage. This is interesting to need to note. Despite the fact that I feel like his down tilt has a little bit more range than the Shoto's, than, than the, like, Ken, it doesn't reach this close. I'm sure there is a spacing where it would. If he was standing, like, right on the, the edge of the green on Pokemon Stadium, he could be down tilting and hit ledge stand up and also be covering for the reverse. But here, excuse me, because here, because he's so close to the ledge, he doesn't reach, despite the autocorrect. So I am able to slip through because of that. Call it on the top up on his part. This is something this is something N's good at doing. Shoto's are really, really good whenever they're like that close range. And he's really point pinpointed a lot of situations where he can roll through his opponent's offense to like be behind them. And then because their moves come out so fast and they're so great in that position, it's worth that risk to try to set up this sort of offense. It's kinda cool. So this is one of those situations that I was talking about where you can auto-cancel the power dunk. So here, the power dunk ends there, and then he lands. So here, he's in just normal landing lag, which is like four frames. So side B doesn't work, and that actually puts me in a really, really, really bad spot. He probably should have just took my stock here. Like, he could drop shield, let's smash me, which probably finishes. His dash attack is low-key really good. And it's not as good at this. So again, because of the fact that his re-hit rate, whenever he's rapid down tilting, isn't as fast as the other Shoto's. How active are you, actually? It's active for four frames, which is pretty good. Six, seven, eight, nine. But it doesn't have a fast re-hit rate, so he can't necessarily put out another button afterwards. And then, again, it's not a tight black string. Not a super tight black string. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, his up smash ends pretty quick. Can't just punish it if he whiffs it. What's the total... Hey, go away. I don't like you. 41 total frames. Compared to our moves, our up smash is like hella total frames. 58. Down smash is absurd. 53. Left smash. It's closer to like <laughs> our tilts <laughs> than our smash decks. Well, I guess 41 isn't super far off from dash deck. So yeah, I, I got caught with a lot of dash decks this game because I wasn't um, I wasn't expecting it to be as active for as long as it is. So you can see here especially. So he starts the dash attack like right here, and it reaches all the way over. It's it's got he's got a pretty good burst range. Whenever and his advantage is pretty good because of that. Whenever he's got you in disadvantage, it can be tricky to land sometimes because even if you like if it looks like you faked him out, like say he's standing in the center of the Pokeball and you like you drift in like you're gonna land on them and you go ha ha just kidding and you air dodge away instead, he can start up a side B or a dash deck as your air dodge is happening and then punish them. So you have to be really careful about that burst range. That was ballsy. Yeah, and he's like, kind of awkward combo. 
off of Jab, in my opinion, because of his weight. We could probably side him. We could probably dash neutral air him. In that situation, I couldn't dash neutral air him because there just wasn't the stage for it. Interesting to note here that forward air isn't actually that great at air to airing. In this situation, he's like doing the forward air and then dropping. Here, if he was Ken, this forward air probably would have hit me. Because Ken forward air is more uh, more straightforward versus his forward air is like diagonal down. So his neutral air is actually probably a better air to air tool than his forward air is. Catch them feet with our neutral air. You want to see another thing that's not okay? Look at these body hitboxes. Look at that. Why is that so big? <laughs> also worth noting that it goes around a third time. I don't know that you can hit opponents with his hitboxes, but theoretically it's possible, maybe. I don't know how far into the Z axis this is. This this body hitbox would probably hit still, because Jesus, look at that. <laughs> it's like Why did they do that? <laughs> like this is reasonable. This, even this is still like kinda crazy, honestly, like. But this. Damn. Really bad. I've been I've definitely had much luck with the neutral B ledge trapping lately, which shouldn't be hard to time because it's like it's pretty active. Mm -hmm. Kind of a blind spot below Terry. His downer doesn't really really hit below him. So if we ever get directly below him up here, it'll shred him. Yeah, his nair's like his body hitboxes are kind of crazy. Like, kind of, like all of them. <laughs> A lot of them, anyways. His aerials, for sure. I should have just ran out forward air here. This is not the situation where, like... So he, here you can see what I'm talking about, where he's, like, technically vulnerable. Where, like, I was not expecting him to do power dunk, I think. I was pretty sure I was expecting him to do the side B, the burning knuckle. Um, but... I, did, I just reacted poorly. So, like, as soon as you see the animation... This should be the sort of thing where we see what animation he's going through. And then we punish. Because, um, like, if... If he, if he crack shot here, even then I'd have to like run off in forward air, and I could react after the crack shoot. Um, so here we should be a thing where like we see him moving up, and then I'm waiting here, and then he falls with the, the power dunk, and then I just run off in forward air. This is kind of a poor edge guard. Yep, a lot of startup on these side piece of his, as long as you just like poke at him appropriately. He shouldn't be able to just break through our, our neutral, especially our advantage, the ledge trapping. So this is what I'm talking about in the situation here, where like, on paper, you should be able to run off and back air him as like he's coming up like this, but because of the fact that his backside hitboxes are pretty good, it's a little bit trickier than you might expect. Possible, but tricky. Forward air him. Yes, thank you, me. So th yeah, this is the situation where like the burst movement comes into effect a lot. Um, in situations like this, where it's like after a fast character like Roy has whiffed to move, um, he could try to punish the move directly, but that's kind of risky. Instead, he just moves forward and then puts his burst movement hitboxes. Let's get some screen drawings going here. He puts his burst movement hitboxes in the space that I could be dashing back. That way, if I do try to move back, it's still like during the startup of that, I'm still getting caught here in my dash back. And there I can't shield. So, good spot to hit. Welcome back, Skeleton. You missed my right hitboxes. <laughs> They're glorious. He should be able to just grab our neutral air. I'm not sure why he's not. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Scary, but not a true combo. I'm kind of flubbing a little bit, honestly. Yeah, this is the same thing. Same situation. This is like, you can see like how consistent this is. Like, <laughs> and, and N's a good player. Like, N is a, N's a, N's pretty, pretty good at this, this year's Smash Bros game. From this distance, tip down tilt, so many people jump afterwards, and the forward air is so good at covering that. You're gonna try solo Mario? Okay. You've been enjoying him more than Joker? Hmm. Yeah, I was a little bit worried about him baiting out my up B here, I think. Because um, this is th this these are games that me and N have played before, where he down tilts my shield and I up B him, and then the next time it's like, oh, am I gonna B again? He wouldn't die from the up B here, which is probably one of the reasons why I didn't do it. 
Um, and I was worried about, like, I'm at a pretty high percent, so if I up B here and he shields it, then he probably, like, back airs me or, like, runs off and F smashes me. Um, bad things happen and I lose my stock. They didn't catch his jump back. Probably, yeah. It, it reaches, the, um, the forward air reaches pretty far out. So if he, like, if he's full hopping away, because you can see here, like, yeah, because of the range, it would probably still catch. It would probably still catch Terry's full hop out. It might not catch all ter all characters full hop out if they like if they hard disengage. Um, if they do it as fast as humanly possible, if they hesitate a little bit on it, it'll probably catch them. <laughs> I'm also surprised I didn't press another button after the forward air. <laughs> I may have tried to. Maybe it was too late. Note the getting the hell out of dodge and not landing on him. This is another thing, especially against characters like Terry, who are really, really, really scary. After you've gone into situations like this, it's very tempting to be like, oh, well, he's whiffed his moves, so now I'm going to go in and fight him. And then you land onto Terry jab or Terry up tilt, or Terry moves, and then he destroys you and you die. Instead, it's better just to leave. It's okay to go off stage. It's, it's like, not pleasant, but it's fine. He killed me for it, but that was because I chose a bad ledge option. I should have rolled past, because he, he was super, super deep with his sound tilts. I think I wanted to... I'm not sure what I wanted there. I don't know if I thought he would do an action or if I thought it would break his shield. He has been jumping a lot after my down tilts, but those down tilt spacings were way different than this spacing, so this is kind of a bad call. If I had double down tilted, then I could I could down tilt down to the left smash and break his shield, which is what I probably should have done. Um, or just down tilt, down tilt, wait. Can I go for that 50 50? Check out this sick not auto turnaround. <laughs> yeah, his grab range isn't great. His grab range actually whiffs on the up B there. While, like, the hitboxes themselves are pretty good, it's still not hitting the hurtbox of Roy. He doesn't, like, he doesn't really lunge forward with his grab. He just kind of leans forward. So it's like, if if it tr if that was a true punish on grab, he would have snatched me up by the elbow. <laughs> but, and that was actually really close. It was one frame off. <laughs> There we go. So that obviously, if if, they, if they're trying to do that, and this is kind of a misplay on his part, honestly. He thought his double jump would be able to grab the ledge, and it was close. Mm -hmm. A little bit shallow here on his jump, so you can see the optimal path for here is like if he's jumping and then coming down on me here. But I'm a little bit further back than that. So his hitboxes are actually going to be a little shallow. So that's why I can jump up and and chop and chop him out there. I love this tool. <laughs> Browser didn't get the full combo out. Did I did I not sweet spot the second hit? I don't think I did. Weird. Probably should have been falling up here. Not sure why I went for Forder. Also not sure. Well, I don't know. I feel like Forder probably should have come out there. He's just a beefy boy. <laughs> and he was behind me. I wonder if he was DIing that way. Weird. Is that like a magical percent where Forder is awkward to combo? Because at 0%, I could definitely get Forder stuff off of, on him. Hitbox is really important to note. If you didn't already note, that his projectile does not go off stage. It's not like Cloud. Like Cloud would shoot off and like go down at an angle here, his just ends at the stage. Similar thing here, with like why rising forward air from the ledge is good. Similar to what we talked about with like down tilt, where it reaches really far. It's got like, it's got a big threat radius. That's one of the reasons why it's worth doing it over neutral air. Interchangeable. It's not like really one's better than the other, in my opinion, but it's really good. Up. Interesting that his, his uh, spot dodge attack hit me here. I'm kind of surprised. It's really, really low. It does not rise up first. The hitbox is at the, the lowest point.
feel like he's a character we could probably down tilt spot dodge against a lot. Be hard for him to punish it. He could, well, he could like on paper forward air it. And this is unfortunate. I almost want to stop it at this point. <laughs> this this goes really poorly here. So I think so. He does down throw, and do up tilt. And that time it looked like it was true. I either just did nothing, or tried to do something really dumb. And I think I tried to double jump because I tried to double jump out here and it didn't work. Um, so I fell with neutral air. Didn't work. He thought I'd be on the platform. Scrambles are happened. That's really really bad. And then I do the worst double jump in history. <laughs> And double jump right on into his side B. And this kills me. This this kills the Roy. It's got enough base knockback, and I'm at high enough percent from all those that 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 extended scramble <laughs> that I actually can't make it back to the ledge, which is super ugly. So let's ignore that last part. That's gonna happen. Um the rest of the That was up smash, not up tilt. You sure? Oh you're right. Yeah, it's up smash because he reaches up more. That makes sense. I wonder if he did up tilt last time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what didn't happen. It just something. That's out of my mind now. <laughs> um, yeah. So you can see like the the times. This is the sort of stuff where I'm talking about where like Terry's really good in scrapping and in scrambling because his buttons hit hit super hard. Yeah, that's pre it's pretty crazy knockback, honestly. <laughs> uh, and like if he makes a hard call, he gets lots of damage. He's got good burst moving options, so it's like it's hard to disengage from a scramble safely because he can chase you. Um, but if you're outside of that scrambling distance, it's pretty hard for him to interact. Like you could see, you saw a lot of times like he's he's trying to do similar things that he do with Ken, where he like jump in and like drop in with forward air, and it wasn't really working super well because he doesn't have great mobility. He can't just jump at his opponent. Um, so that is the end of my set versus N. I do have another one that I want to go over, um, which is the two Utah players, Tomato and Ogre B, I think it is, um, which is one of the other, like the only other really like full Roy versus Terry set of both players that were like proficient with their character that I could find. Um, so this one is much more recent. This one actually um it's from like two weeks ago three weeks ago november 24th so still like three weeks ago um but it's more recent so it's it's a character that it's a more developed terry it's a terry that has better idea of what he's doing with the character than and no offense to him that was week one um and a roy who probably has more experience against the character as well so i feel like this one will be a little bit more indicative of tactics you can use in a set as the roy against a terry don't throw up, smash, catches your jump, but you can air dodge. Okay, I that makes sense, because I'm pretty sure I tried to jump out of that, but I did air dodge earlier, and I guess that was up smash he did earlier, and I air dodged out of it, and nothing happened. So, that's good to know, actually. Don't throw up, smash is not true. You can dodge. So, the, um, the Roy in this set does a lot of what I was talking about, where he, he respects his opponent's space. Flies at him a little bit, because everywhere he flies at their opponent a little bit, this is what they do. But in situations like this... Actually, you can't air dodge it either? Okay, cool. Good to know. Thanks. In situations like this, like, he's... he's He's sitting inside his space, and this is a really, really important concept for... This is... This is what shadowing is, basically. Um... He's in the space here, right before he's dashing... In this spot... will be orange for Rai, since he's orange. <laughs> he's standing in this spot, and that is inside of the range of short up forward air, before he starts running away. Like, before he started started running away, forward air, short up forward air would hit this. So he's standing directly in this spot to try to, like, tempt him into doing that. Like, he, he ran up there, he stood for a second saying, hey, I'm in this place where you can use your buttons, and then as soon as that second happened where, like, the Terry sees that he's not doing anything. He's oh, it's my turn. Okay, well, you're in the spot where I'll forward air, so... Where I can forward air, so I guess I'll forward air. And the entire point of this movement is for, for Ogre B to, like, step in there, sit, wait, and then dash back. And after he's dashed back, if his opponent did take the bait, if when he's dashing back, the forward air does happen, then he can move back in and then punish easily. This is Shadowing 101. And it is a beautiful thing. Really, really strong against characters like Terry, who have slow movement speed, but good burst movement speed. Here, he's not respecting his burst movement speed. <laughs> his burst movement space. So, like, right here, this is uh, a, a, the perfect position. 
right here as he's like going in for the neutral air for a terry to dash attack him or to like crack shoot or anything right here this is exactly where we don't want to be this is actually this is also outside of roy's burst movement range in my opinion so roy's burst movement range for like his because let's be real running at our opponent with sharp neutral air is burst movement range Roy moves really fast really far it's about right here in my opinion that's about the distance of a perfect distance dash in neutral air here he's too short he's not he's not quite in that range for that he's just, so because of that because he's a little bit outside of that he needs to run forward first and then start the the, um, the attack up and that little bit of movement this right here is enough to signal to his opponent that he's doing something that he's he's being getting ready to move into position to attack and terry's burst movement range is a little bit bigger than Roy's, so he can use he can side b at this distance so he's looking for this distance as roy if you're ever inside this space versus terry you need to be leaving <laughs> because you either are, are already like you've moved into this spot or uh, or you're moving away if you're ever stopped at this point it's not a good spot to be moving forward you need to be moving back and then like reassessing and then trying to weave your way either right here where you're just outside of his move, burst movement range and he needs to move forward to try and get anything started or you need to be like slipping into this spot and then attacking and all the me meanwhile, like kind of like dipping your toes into this space and be like, hey, you gonna you gonna crack shoot? You gonna you know side B? How about that dash attack? And then if he ever does that, because of the fact that you're playing more evasively, because of the fact that you're shadowing that movement, you should be dashing back, similar to what he did with the forward air out of shield, touching the space, dashing back forward air like burst movement whiffs here, and then we can swing and whiff punish. Crack shoot is probably. I, I feel like it has less range than the side B, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's let's look at that. Let's see. Oh, we don't really see the range here, unfortunately. Okay. Well, rip. <laughs> let's not see then. I feel like the side B goes a little bit further. Maybe I'm wrong. The hitbox on the foot might reach out a little bit further, or about the same. It's 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 definitely faster than the burning on knuckle. A hey. Razor Smash, how's it going? What program is this that you're using to draw on YouTube, and does it work for drawing on other things? So what I'm using is actually a program called Epic Pen, and what Epic Pen does is that it just draws on. It basically virtually draws on my screen so i can it's not just youtube that i could draw on, it's just like on the screen itself so if i like if i were to like pull up discord it's still drawing on it and it's to, for, for this for the capture i'm capturing my entire screen instead of just my the, my youtube tab epic pen it's free it's awesome go check it out the only downside is that you have to do you have to do screen capture instead of window capture or rather you know what I mean? <laughs> Program capture. So the, the display capture is usually like a little bit less efficient, a little bit slower than uh, than capturing just a window of something. Um, but that's the only way that the that Epic Pen shows up. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, this is kind of what I'm talking about, where like Terry can choose options that are difficult for Ray to cover. Um, with his side B up here. just It's just hard for Roy to get that high. Even if he had, like, best case scenario, Ogre, like, double jumps back here and then touches base and then goes up to attack again. By the time that fini that animation finishes, by the time he's coming back up at Gamer, Osiris, I guess. Osiris and Ogre B. And by the time he's going back up, oh, sorry, he's looking at, at that. Uh, by the time he's going back up at Osiris, the side B animation is going to be over and then he can be, like, double jumping or air dodging or, like, doing something else. Okay, cool. Neat. Yeah, I, I wasn't 100% sure, Pook, but I assumed it was side B. Usually that's how they balance things. Usually the faster moves don't reach as far, but side B also does hit a lot harder, so maybe that's how they thought about it. Was my mindset. My, my thought process. Just F smash the foot. Yeah, note this. Note this again. Not landing on his opponent disadvantage. Don't land on Terry. <laughs> Like he double jumps. Let's get our orange back on. He double jumps up. 
and then he kind of like starts drifting forward like he's thinking about moving in on, on his opponent but then he's like oh wait my opponent's Terry and then he moves away and he leaves and he just lands on the platform safely this is the, this is how you get out of disadvantage just landing on your opponent aggressively is not a good idea See, look at this spacing. This spacing is exactly what I'm talking about. Staying outside of Terry's range. He dashes around, moves around, pokes safely, dashes, dashes, and it makes him come into his space. That's what you do as the faster character. You don't just rush them down like a maniac. <laughs> even, even Melee Fox can't do that. Melee Fox can't just run at you all day. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. well. Oof. I'm kind of surprised you got F-Smash here. It's still, like, on paper, this wasn't a bad idea. I feel like he should have been reversed the side B. He should have done this exact thing to do these exact motions to punish this exact thing. Kind of, kind of, a, kind of a bit of a nitpick. Um, he, I, the B reverse side B here would have been a better call, in my opinion. Um, drifting away with the side B just puts him too far away, which is why the F-Smash happens. That's, that's big range on that. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, this is why I'm saying we shouldn't jab Terry's shield. Shouldn't try to do jab pressure anyway. It's like fishing for one jab is always fine, but we will not be able to press buttons afterwards. This is something that Ogre does that I don't agree with. A low percent up swings finisher on the side B um, is like negative on hit. Near max range is only six frames slower. Crack shoot was hitting as 26, 32. Okay. Yeah, so max range crack shoot. Usually if they crack shoot, they're not going to do, be doing max range crack shoot because it takes a while for like, they do the flip and then like their feet come around. So it's kind of like right forward air and then it like starts from the top and then goes all the way back to the down bottom. If they're crack shooting, they're usually aiming for like the middle of the crack shoot because they're like coming through and then they hit. Um, so it'll usually, you'll, you'll, you'll usually see them use crack shoot at about that distance for like the, the middle of the flip for the crack shoot or maybe even like a little bit past the middle. Whereas burning knuckle will be like for the tip distance or not quite tip distance because again, the tip is kind of slow, but it can be m better utilized at the tip distance, I feel, than crack shoot. Because if you're going to go for that distance away, you should probably be be going for uh, hard punish anyways. Harping! How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Good to hear you're doing well. I'm, I'm really glad. It's a step back. Yeah, the, the, so you can see here, like, F-tilt uh, from the cherry. It's like... It's a decent anti-air because it stays out for a couple frames, but he doesn't really get much off of it. He could have, like, burning knuckled here, but it wasn't wouldn't true combo. Um, especially this distance away. There are some situations where, like, um, Buster Wolf actually will combo off of F-Tilt, but it's usually only if you DI away from it. If you don't DI away, if you DI in, um, while that's scary because you're, like, being put closer to him, the, the, bur the, the Buster Wolf is, like, too low. Hmm. Not sure what the roll was about. <laughs> Not sure what he's trying to do there. That's a situation where Osiris should have like stepped in, while while Terry doesn't like open people up with pressure. He should be like, I don't know. Maybe he misinputted. Maybe he tried to like step forward and down tilt and just because he like he got it happen afterwards. So it probably was a script sort of thing. Back here. This is something that Ogre does that's pretty good. So that side B hits really hard. So if you counter that, Terry goes boom. Let's do something a little bit chipper. This, mu this music is literally called Ruined World. So let's get that one. That's good. I like the chill. <laughs> Surprise he used F throw here. I feel like against most characters, F throw would be fine. But here we actually still get down throw neutral air against Terry. Like, he could have got a lot of damage off of that. And I respect wanting to, like, dash dance and do the melee thing and stay away from him, but. Still eventually got the forward air string, so not that big of a deal. Also, that's cute. <laughs> Classic double jump mix up. Classic. Yeah, back air miss. Doesn't have that much ending lag. If if he had shielded that power dunk, it probably could have been F smash. What are you on block power dunk? I'm pretty sure you're hella negative, but are you that negative? 
Florida. Minus 19. Hmm. Actually, no. It's not actually that's it. Unsafe. It's it's unsafe. Like, you drop shield buttons him. Especially if you're a character who has faster buttons than Roy. But actually can't F smash him. I would not have guessed. This is why we look at the frame data. <laughs> so that we can know for sure. Guessing is bad for your health. Bad for your stocks. Yeah, sometimes characters will, like, this is the, the, the scary thing on Terry's side of things, is that if he wants to get a big punish off of down tilts, I'll, sometimes he has to guess. He has to, like, down tilt and just go straight into it, um, which the side B is very weak pressure. Uh, very weak, um, well, very weak pressure. It's very unsafe. Uh, no, side B is a frame 20 option. Drop shield side B for Roy. Drop shield double chance, because 11 frames of shield drop plus 9 frames startup side B. Which is actually an important thing to note. Because side B is a pretty good way to kill people. Yeah, like here, this is the same thing where like he he goes for the setup and like on paper this sounds like this should be good. But the back hitboxes of the rising tackle actually reach pretty far back. And because Roy extends his hand out like this, it's more likely for us that we'll get a trade. So to, to, for, to make this back air work, we need to be spaced back a little bit further so that the, the edge of our sword is hitting him. And then it's a tip, so, you know, we're not going to untech a bullet ever with, with tip back air. And then, if he's ready to tech, then... Roy without his double jump off stage is a dead boy. Yep, good backup. This is an important thing. Against a lot of characters, so against like Roy, in this situation, if we were in Terry's position and we had hit with like um, up air or whatever here, and our opponent tried to like air dodge and drift back like this, even after dashing back, we could like run and like pressure them and press buttons and stuff. Terry's not fast enough to do that. If he backs up like this, he needs to just back up and like hold this position. So just moving away in this sort of situation is the best tactic. Unless he's hard calling it out. That's the scary part because he has side B. Uh. Oh, this, this, though. This is really punishable. Especially because he got behind him. Bust a wolf is like minus 45. My, actually, right on the dot. Minus 45. This is the move that we nuke. We we drop shield and we nuke this. And it's important to note that his... his the, the, the Buster Wolf functions kind of like link up B in that once this first hit hits something once it's hit our shield <laughs> once it hit our shield right on the dot we got it <laughs> um the, as soon as it hits something or it gets like it's it's a shield or like it gets parried or something the second hit will no longer come out so we can, if you as soon as it touches shield you can then just start dropping shield and start doing something um which looks really funny whenever you parry it because if like, you parry it sometimes he'll just like push you back and but he'll be pushing you back in the the ending animation like that and you can just like charge up smash and end his life So like that could have been like turn around. Uh, turn around F might not have killed him yet because he's Terry and he's beefy. Um, side B might have. Side B probably would have. Side B's busted. And uh, it was really just the question of whether or not side, side B would like keep him in the sweet spot. Which if he did the side B right, it should. Um, F smash obviously kills him. Down smash might. I don't think down smash kills him. I don't think down smash is that strong. This is a good thing though. This this is a this is a nice safe in between. If you're not comfortable in the position that Terry's are covering from, or if you're just not comfortable trying to edge guard him in general, you can always do this, where you just like jump out and be like, oh, nope, just kidding. And jump off stage and then double jump back on and then just like poke at him. Because there is a chance, especially if it's like a, uh, a, a set where your opponent is stressed, or if your opponent's not as good, excuse me, good at recovering. Sometimes the legs will stick above, they are vulnerable at the tip, even if they do the command charge on the, the uppie. And then if you poke them here, and they've used their double jump, uh, that's it's not it just kidding <laughs> have i mentioned this recovery is kind of durable it's it's, it's interesting this recovery is oddly good not a bad idea with the back air here but it would have had to been earlier he would have had to have rise and like full hot back air and not do the double jump that's too slow much damage this does it's not that much actually it feels like it feels like a lot of damage but it's like it's 28 it's it's 
nice for Terry that he gets that damage pretty consistently up until like 120-ish percent. Um, and a lot of high tier characters act kind of differently in that they like, like Roy, for example. If Roy hits you with falling forward air, neutral air, down throw if you're two thirds of the cast, jab if you're a floaty character, all four of those things lead into neutral air strings, which lead into like 40, 50 percent, like even more if you DI poorly. Um, but then after that point, his, his his damage output drops. Then he generally is only getting like one or two hit combos, um, which will do around like 20, 25 ish. Um, usually probably on the lower end of 20. But here, but Terry, the, the interesting thing about him is that he pretty consistently gets that 28%. So, like, he'll hit you the first time and it'll be like 28, but then it'll hit you again and it'll be 28, and then he could hit you again and then do 28 again, and then you're at kill percent. So he, like, he doesn't have the biggest spike damage, but he's got consistent damage output. That's actually really safe. The jab is minus 6. Kind of cute. Oh, that was also kind of cute. Hang below him to make him freak out and press a button before doing the upper. It's a little delay. Especially because he just did, like, he just did the panic grab. Like, that shows that he's in the mindset of doing panic options. So, hanging in that position and giving him another attempt. Hey, that one didn't work. Maybe this panic option will work. Just kidding, it was a trap. So, go on down to town and city. Yeah, so this situation will happen a lot, and I don't blame him for not punishing here because the words go are literally still on the screen. <laughs> I, I don't know that I would have punished this here. Um, but this is narrow out of shield punishable, grab punishable, up, he had a shield punishable. It is not a safe move. It is not drop shield jab punishable. <laughs> not that punishable. It is lightly punishable. Got the double jump there, so that's pretty scary. He had the right idea, did Ogre. But <clears throat> but it would have had to have been a short hop. Yeah, if he short hop here, he could have landed the spike on that frame, which would have been pretty godlike. Yeah, so much of the screen gets covered up. So much. Really punishable. <clears throat> Again, he could have smashed him there. I mean, probably should have smashed him there. But it's not many. It's not very. Not, all, not every day that Roy gets the chance to drop shield, have smash somebody, and boy, does it feel good. So here, this actually doesn't work as well. Um, partially because he's doing it a little bit too early. Like he could. You see, um, Osiris is going up a little bit above the ledge there. I think it's better to aim. Here, he's down airing like Osiris is going to snap to the ledge with his up B, which isn't how it works and uh, earlier on right there is also where he could potentially still have intangibility from the leg intangibility or even full intangibility from the like true input um so this was a little bit too low a little bit too early but the idea could work oh yeah this is what i'm talking about if uh, if you di away on the f tilt you can get bus wolf it's a lot of damage it's also kill here but it's like 40 damage good this is a position where I, I as a player would be really really tempted to jump off the ledge aggressively and swing and i probably would have got kicked in the face <laughs> and then life would have been difficult now with the drift back again pretty hard for terry to cover this for terry terry can cover this again for like drifting back like this and disadvantage but he has to commit to dash attack or side bjork actually just doing neutral air like that as you can see like doesn't really keep ogre in the corner you can jump out Good spacing for the forward air. That was weird. <laughs> I don't know if you can control the angle of that and just that it's too late or or too deep or what. But mm -hmm. yeah, up airs are kind of poorly timed. A lot of times to make up air safe. The reason why these uppers are poorly timed, I should say, rather than just saying that. You can see here in the animation where he's doing it. He's doing the up air as soon as possible after jumping. And what that means is that he, he's doing the move, and then the move is ending sooner in his jump arc, and then he's having to wait longer to fall down. So here, where he's doing like this like this up air, rising, and uh, same thing for like this up air, where he's doing it literally as soon as he's jumping. Now that it tips him, you can see he's literally still in the up air animation. It's super negative on hit on, with the tip. Um, better up airs instead would be jumping, especially 
in situations like right here where he's trying to catch the double jump because you want to be safe against that a lot of times if you do the uh, by rising it'll tip and then you get punched in the face or kicked in the face instead you jump and then wait and then up air and then fast fall as the up air is coming out that way even if it tips you still have time to get down to the, the the ground and then either act aggressively whether that be with like up tilt or neutral air or dashing away and like pressing buttons or just shield and be safe Gotta have that delay. That delay is really important. There's a bit of, bit of spaghetti here and there. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, same thing here. Like this, 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 the, the, same, the same issue here, where like he did the the double jump up air, the short up up air, while instantly while rising, gets the tip. Especially because you're you're farther away. If you wait to do the up air when you're further up in the air, then the up air is deeper, so it's more likely to sweet spot. Um, but because he did it on the way up here, like. It's like if you just look at when the animation of this up air comes out, when the animation of like the air dodge comes out, if Osiris had just pressed a button here, he would have beat the up, up air. Up air's not out yet. Bum, 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 bum. Good parry. Surprised you didn't side be or uh, power down. Yep, that doesn't work on stage <laughs> or at the edge of the stage rather. They're both getting really antsy now. Good punish on the power dunk. Too high. This is the interesting thing, because even if he does, like, if he DI's high and then Burning Knuckles instantly, he still has access to his double jump. So he can still jump over our our interception. So uh, some other characters could potentially catch him here. Characters like Greninja or Falco, could their, their double jumps go super, super far. Roy's got a pretty low double jump, so it's hard for him to catch that. And then he can power dunk afterwards, which is kind of nuts. Yep, that's gonna get kicked. Can't double jab on shield. I think that sort of down arrow would probably work better. That one was a little bit not the best timing, but trap afterwards is really good. Good space looking here on his part. I wouldn't have. He had to have drift a little bit extra far back here to, or like not fast fault on his, his pullback to actually get back far enough. He had, if he had fast fault and landed, he would have landed like right here, and then his F tilt would not have hit. That's good spacing. Again, avoiding him. Again, staying out of his range. Waiting for him to dash back and then taking space afterwards. Yep, wait for the unsafe move. It'd be a down stab, though, for maximum damage. Yeah, hey, look at this. So, so the, it's, this is really, really strong tactics, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to go for this hit in particular. Because, like, so he 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 runs forward. He does neutral air. It doesn't work out. Um, his opponent rolls past him. So now he's in like sort of an awkward position where his neutral air is whiffed, and his opponent can act still. He doesn't have as much stage control. So he backs up because he doesn't want to be inside that burst movement range. Because obviously Osiris is going to move forward. He doesn't want to be inside the range where he can dash attack and inside the and crack shoot. And now after he's dashed back, now he jumps forward and doesn't immediately attack Osiris. He's not moving in here to, like, force an aggressive option. He's not jumping in with... He's not, not even doing, like, a safe aggressive option. Like, he could, like, jump and, like, follow falling forward air here, which would be, like, pretty safe, but it would still lose to stuff like forward tilt, still lose to, to Osiris' dash attack. Instead, what he's doing is he's dashing back, and then he's trying to get back to center stage. And here... There's lots of different things he can do. He can go up on the platform and then zip on out and just be gone because Terry's not going to catch him if he does that. He could land here and then fall and like fall aggressively aggressively with, with back air. He could fall and then like double jump and then be gone. He could do run off and then swing this way. Like there's, you see like this position here has so many different things he can, so many different ways he can move around and like circumvent Osiris' stage control. And it's much, much better than just trying to fight him here. Because here is Osiris' stage control. Yeah, very smart, very safe play. This is great stage control. And even that, like, I didn't even, I didn't even consider that option. <laughs> like, he could just back air his shield. Um, I probably, I might have liked it to be gone on the platform a little bit better. But still, that was still a safe way. The objective there was not to, the, the first objective there, the main thing he was going for there was not to hit Osiris. He could have potentially hit Osiris there, but his main objective was to get back to center stage. Yeah, you can always have your reverse momentum in case it gets ugly. It's a good point. You could, as he's like jumping up in there, if you like, if 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 Osiris hadn't been shielding and started to like walk back or started to like short hop to like set up for an up air after you fall or like full hop to like cover the platform hard, we could always reverse our movement and then go back to the corner and then move in and then fight jostle for position there. Don't know why that depth turned around. <laughs> a little, little bit awkward. 
it's funny because I saw him do this and I was like, I would probably try and down air him here. And uh, <laughs> Ogre saw it too, but a little bit too late. Okay, good patience. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, it's so beautiful. The ult. Look at this distance. See this distance? This is like the exact distance that Osiris wants to be at to do the burst movement thing. And the spot where Ogre steps into is literally like a foot to the left. Like <laughs> he moves from here to like here. And that is enough to move him out of the way. <laughs> he does dash attack. It's dash attack not, and not side B. Or, or uh, crack shoot. But same idea. Yeah. The smallest little tiny step. It's beautiful. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that is real micro spacing. <laughs> Same thing here. I, that, I feel like like I a very similar situation to like whenever I was edge guarding, and this is a situation where he probably the only way that he covers this in time instead of instead of going down and then setting up for the double jump, he would have had to have gone down and just just back air, and it would have worked. He like he could have back aired him here. Yeah. Look at this! It's so good! I would definitely press a button here, and then it would be a scramble, and then I probably would have, like, potentially died. But instead, he just dashes around, stays out of the range of his attack ranges, lets him panic, and then... And he panics a little bit himself, too, unfortunately. He's maybe going a little bit too fearful here. But the, up, the bait on the up smash is good. The reaction afterwards wasn't as good, but... How's it going, Grimoire Rapier? Welcome to the stream. It's been so long. Crack shoot. So once you get, into that. yeah, yeah. So that that makes down tilting a little bit interesting, because it's gonna be hard to punish down tilt with the burning knuckle. Is burning knuckle right? Is it burning knuckle or power knuckle? Pretty sure it's burning knuckle. Burning Knuckle, yeah, got it. Um, it's going to be hard to punish Down Tilt with Burning Knuckle, because Burning Knuckle's got a lot of startup. So, like, hitting that small window where Down Tilt isn't active anymore, but hasn't actually ended, would be pretty tight. Um, dash Attack would probably be a little bit easier, but that knowing that Crack Shoot goes over it is pretty cool. Because that means you could Down Tilt at, like, tip Down Tilt spacing, or, like, just outside of tip Down Tilt spacing. Probably, like, it'd probably be kind of hard for Terry to deal with that. He could probably jump at us and, like, set up for, like, falling neutral or falling forward air. So maybe still not the best, but might be hard for him to, like, troop punish. It's just a miss angle. He's spaghetti a little bit. That's okay. Good patience. Good stagger. Hmm. Isn't it worth noting that the power geyser doesn't true combo here off of the down the forward tilt? I wonder if he tried to Buster Wolf. He probably tried to Buster Wolf. Kinda scary, but living. Yep, feet still intangible, but Good positioning afterwards. His reactions for, like, F-tilting and such at the ledge are pretty good. It's a good... Th that sort of tactic I'm a big fan of, of just, like, dashing into stage like that. Um, just to make sure your opponent ca can't slip behind you. Especially as Terry. Like, if a Shoto slips behind you whenever you're at the ledge, like, it's their stage now. <laughs> like, this is just, It's theirs. He lost it. Da, 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 da. Let's see, it takes him back to Stadium, which I don't know if it's a great idea for Osiris, because having more stage to run would be good for Ryan this matchup. This is definitely a, a Dash Dance matchup. Curious. Interesting. Yeah, see, like here, because of the fact that the move is still pretty negative, even though this drop shield dash grab isn't a true punish, it 
it's going to be difficult for Terry to put out a button fast enough to beat this, and it's going to be difficult for him to react to this too. So this is it's still a good way you can like you can punish the the cross up crash, or at least try to go for aggression afterwards. That's a very Ken neutral air down air. Good parry doesn't actually set up or anything. Good reaction there. Maybe a little left smash happy. <laughs> Curious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good way to like stuff his opponent trying to do something after they have tilt, have tilt crack shoot. Okay, that's interesting. So if we do jab and then dash away, we that one frame of us dashing. Let's see if he gets the one frame of dash. This may have been kind of late. So jab is minus nine, which means that if the if he did the forwarder uh as fast as humanly possible it would be active for one frame yeah just the one frame of dash is enough to make roy move far enough away that the jab is safe that's funny i wonder how many characters we can do this against because i'm thinking like so for jabbing people's shield and they try to grab us um spot dodge is i believe frame three intangible There is spot dodge. Spot dodge. Frame three intangible. Yeah. So against against most characters, we can't jab into the spot dodge because um, they effectively have an eleven frame window on the twelfth frame after jabbing their shield. After that interaction ends, then we're invulnerable because we we spot dodge. Um, so fra so grabs that are eight frames or faster can grab us if they're assuming they're inside range. If we try to spot dodge afterwards, but. If we dash away instead, we pull all of our hurt boxes a good distance away, even on the first frame. So there's probably a spacing we can stand at where we can maybe even sweet spot jab on shield and then move out of the way of a grab response. Because the fastest grab response is going to be 10. Even on a, even a six frame grab, it's still a frame 10 option because of the four frame delay after you shielded something. So even against the fastest grabs in the game, we could still get this one frame of dash away. So there's probably a spacing we can do this at where we can get the jab to still sweet spot, especially against their shield, especially if they're shielding. Maybe not if they're not shielding, but then be able to dodge afterwards with our movement. That's something I want to let because that could be really cool. And I'm actually gonna wonder if my my is my nightbot still working? I, th I think it, I think I saw it throwing out some uh, some advertisements earlier, so it should be. Let's see if I can remember what this uh, is that. Oh, that's not it. What is it? I don't remember my commands. <laughs> so instead, I'm just gonna. So I want that to be clipped. So I can talk about it. Do, 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 do. How to clip. Why am I bad at this? Nope, oh, just kidding. Okay, I won't worry about it that much. <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm curious to see how far we can take that. Like, how... how cause, so we don't really move much past that afterwards, so like it, it takes like a couple frames for us to move out of that space. So, uh, that only this first frame is really applicable, but... Because I haven't done this in three months. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> um, but that's very interesting to me. He's moving at angles that are really awkward for Osiris to cover. So, like... Forward tilt is a pretty good anti-air, but only if your opponent is coming in from, like, a pretty low angle. Here, for like this, especially, like, a past distance where up smash will, won't reach, is looks like it's pretty tricky for Terry to cover that. He might be able to up air here, but I'm that's something that most Terry's, I feel, probably aren't going to look for. Nice. Mm -hmm. 
It's marker. I think it's marker. Aha! I got it. <laughs> it's a little bit off the mark, but that'll be close enough to like where I can find what I was talking about. That could have been more neutralized. I think he missed the fast wall here. Yeah, because if he had fast wall, that he could have gotten dash neutral air and continued the combo. Air. Does not that kills the Terry? Just kidding, that doesn't. His like his side B is surprisingly low end lag. Maybe it's not the end lag. He, I feel like he gets he keeps momentum moving forward, so he doesn't fall as much near the end as you might expect before he can actually act. It's not like Fox side B or like Falco side B where like he blips and then stops and then falls immediately. He like it's got more of a curve to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scary. He really needs to. Okay, good. <laughs> I was gonna say like after this moment where like he's he swung and he, like he could have gotten back out here. He he kind of stood there and hesitated for a second. Like here, Osiris just wants him to come down at him. Like please, just hit me. I dare you. And Ogre fortunately did not. He just backed up. Did he reverse up smash out of shield? Or did he drop shield up smash? Huh. Is that a thing? Can you reverse up smash out of shield as Shoto's? Did I just not know that? That's scary. Yep, very punishable. I don't think it's F smash punishable. Let's find out. Is it side B punishable? Is dash attack? No. It's only, wow, only minus 15. That's actually pretty safe. A light punish. So still punishable, but not like punishable. Good parry. Hmm. I feel like he, I wonder what he could have done. I'm sure there's something he could have done there to try to have the turn that parry punish into a KO, but we got the ledge trap for there. But throw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be hard to stop him from recovering that low. Kind of a blind spot for Roy. No way to dodge and a double jump. Oh. Oh, wait. That one did grab. <laughs> oh, is it because of the grab timer? It might have been because of the grab timer here. Yeah, he was still flashing from the grab timer. He was in grab range. I'm going to use this side B in weird ways. Lots of crossing up the back air. That, <laughs> that was so good. So this would be pretty common to like land up here and be like, yo, what you doing? And like try to pressure there. Um, the second out that you would normally do in this sort of situation, if like you put yourself here and then didn't want to be there anymore, would either be like run off stage, run off the platform or like fall through the platform. Um... Ogre falls through to say, like, hey, okay, I'm leaving, you can leave now, and then double jump up bears. That is kind of cool. Yeah, a little bit too wide. Too wide swinging, that is. Yeah, that's a situation where you should just move away. Well, that'd be the prop jump away is, is the safest option. Roll away. Uh, as an option, but you could get like it could get side beat, and that's scary. Crash shoot's not really that threatening. He got hit at like 140 and wasn't threatened for the KO. Mm hmm. A little bit aggressive. Yeah, yeah, Ogre was fishing for the kill pretty hard there. I'm not surprised that he went for the sliding F tilt there. 
Because he was trying to look like he was... So he's trying to do cross-up back air, which in my opinion is not what he should have done. He probably should have been going for, like, Nair 1 into KO option. Nair 1 F-Smash works here. Nair 1 jab back air kills. And he probably could have got him on the startup of that. Um, but he still turned the scramble afterwards. Same thing we were talking about before, like how you use burst, burst movement to cover an opponent who's, like, moving away. Same thing as, like, me versus Ed. Where you can... If they've, if they've gotten... Them, if they've whiffed a move like outside of the range where you can immediately punish them, rather than trying to swing where they are, trying to swing in the, all that area is a good way to catch them as they're trying to step back and make themselves safe. That was a good call. But yeah, his movement overall, that, that's that's the thing I wanted to showcase in this set, is that Ogre did a really good job like dancing around his space. He didn't get down tilted very much, he didn't get jabbed very much. He got hit by some, but not like a ton. You're going to get hit by some versus Terry, it's just going to happen. Um... Played around his burst movement fairly well. A little bit of spaghetti near in the like the second half of this the <laughs> the second game, a little bit here at the end. But overall, played the matchup pretty well in my opinion. Played it how like this is this is the rough idea of how it should be played. Oh, 